Hello everyone, I'm Dean Melissa Nobles, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this year's MIT Shass Infinite Mile Awards ceremony. We're here today to formally acknowledge members of the administrative and support staff in our school community for their extraordinary talent and dedication. Before we get started, I want to highlight MIT's rewards and recognition efforts. First, the MIT Excellence Awards, an annual institute-wide celebration. Second, the Appreciation Program, which consists of informal on-the-spot rewards for employees. And third, the Shass Infinite Mile Awards, which is designed to support the goals and values of our school. And it is the reason we are here today. I think it's fair to say that the last year and a half has been a tough time for all of us. So I can't emphasize enough how proud I am of our school community for pulling together during the pandemic. This is in large part thanks to the people we are honoring today and others like them, people who always go above and beyond their job descriptions. These are dedicated, hardworking, and talented professionals, but even more importantly, they are supportive human beings. Over and over again, the nominations committee emphasized that these are the people many of us turn to in times of need, whether there is need for help on a project, little advice, or even just a smile. Today, we are honoring the best of us, people who foster an inclusive culture and make every day at work better. So I want to congratulate and give my heartfelt thanks to each of our winners. Please note that since we weren't able to have a ceremony last year, we are honoring both the 2020 Infinite Mile Award winners and the winners from 2021. In both years, we received many strong nominations. So the selection committee has had a difficult job choosing the 12 individuals we are celebrating today. Of course, we would love to be holding this event in person, but I think our team has put together a nice presentation with videos to honor our wonderful recipients. So let's get right into it. I will now turn things over to Richard Samuels, Ford International Professor of Political Science and Director of the Center for International Studies, who will present the first of the 2020 Infinite Mile Awards. MISTI is an extraordinarily successful international education program and within MISTI, MIT Spain's been a star, in large part thanks to its managing director, Alicia goldstein Rao. It's my honor today to recognize Alicia with the 2020 Great Ideas Award. An extremely valuable member of the MISTI team for more than a decade, Alicia has steered the program through many recent ups and downs in the Spanish economy. Her success in creating new internship opportunities for her students, whether through the Global Teaching Labs program or the expansion of the Global Seed Fund opportunities has made MIT Spain one of MISTI's most high-performing programs, both in terms of placements and fundraising year after year. Alicia's list of accomplishments is long, so I'll just mention a few. She designed evaluation criteria for MISTI programs, provided group training for MISTI managers, and she now administers a large faculty Global Seed Fund. She's also created a highly popular global teaching labs program that enables students to teach and lead STEM workshops in Spanish high schools. Perhaps most notably, she agreed to lead and develop new MISTI initiatives in Portugal and in the UK, even though she was not deeply familiar with those countries. And to be successful with MIT Portugal, in fact, she even took an MIT language class in Portuguese. She's a gem, and she's very well deserving of this honor. So congratulations, Alicia. We send over a thousand students a year, in a typical year, abroad through all of our different programs. We're in over 35 countries working with students to facilitate hands-on experiences um, in the countries that I work with. So whether that be an internship at a company or a research institute or university or a teaching experience where they're working at foreign high schools and teaching STEM subjects or helping to manage research collaborations between MIT faculty or researchers and their counterparts abroad. And so we reach so many students, so many alumni, so many faculty. It's really been tremendous growth since I started so many years ago. I just celebrated my 14th anniversary with MIT. I've been with MISTI for that entire time. Um, for these 14 years, I've been the MIT Spain and MIT Portugal Managing Director. 
And over the last year, I've taken on a new role as assistant director of MISTI, where I oversee the data and operations team, communications team, and global seed funds program that we have. Working at MIT for all of these years has been a phenomenal learning and growing experience. I come from a liberal arts background, so having to talk about things like nanotechnology and stem cells and artificial intelligence on a regular basis has really been mind-blowing. When I arrived at MISTI, it was like finding my life partner. <laughs> As we say in Spanish, tu media naranja, which is your literally translated to uh, half orange or your soulmate. So it's just being at MISTI has always felt like home for me. It's always felt like the right fit. I'm very grateful to MIT. I'm very grateful to MISTI and to Shas and to my manager and my coworkers for supporting me over so many years. And of course, over this last year that has been so challenging. I'm just honored to have been nominated and recognized in this way. Now to introduce our next award, I'd like to give the floor to Shankar Raman, professor of literature, head of the literature section, and a McVicker faculty fellow. Over to you, Shankar. Belinda Young is a shining example of an unsung hero, a colleague who never ceases to go above and beyond her responsibilities as the literature section's IT officer. She makes everything she touches better, and I'm truly honored to be able to present her with the 2020 Unsung Hero Award. Always proactive when it comes to managing our departmental websites and servers, Belinda anticipates problems and presents carefully researched solutions. Not long ago, for example, she worked out how to tag the research interests and subject offerings on our website to enable students to search our course offerings in different, more informative ways, helping them decide more easily among options. She handles every request quickly and competently. As one nominator wrote, if something sounds impossible, she'll never say it is. Instead, she'll work tirelessly to find solutions to get the job done. Most notably, Belinda has been the cornerstone of Digital Shakespeare at MIT, a project with international scope, and she's widely appreciated among our collaborators around the globe for her grace and professionalism. Belinda's a real team player, quietly making everyone's jobs more manageable, whether that's by creating new ways to access information, or just by bringing in sweets to lift morale. She's a joy to work with and a true unsung hero. Congratulations, Belinda. I'd like to thank the 2020 Infinite Mile Award Selection Committee for choosing me for the Unsung Hero Award. I love Shakespeare. <laughs> it's funny. Um, People ask me if you know, I'm now a Shakespeare expert and I am not by any means because I don't, I don't teach it, you know. Um, I can now identify like uh, quotes from Shakespeare's plays. You know, I, I'll know like a particular character comes from let's say Hamlet or Othello. And occasionally when I'm watching Jeopardy and if there are you know, Shakespeare clues, I have fun trying to figure out, oh, do I know that one, you know. The lowest and most dejected thing of fortune Stand still in Esperance. Lives not in fear. It gets really exciting when someone's you know, put their own spin on it or they uh, change the setting of the original production. Like, for example, there was a bilingual King Lear that was staged. Certain characters only spoke Mandarin and other characters only spoke English. <laughs> King Lear is trying to divide his kingdom among his three daughters. But in this particular bilingual King Lear, they have transposed everyone to a corporate setting. So it's, it's you know it's really fun <laughs> to discover these changes people have made and to see how it's then received and how it impacts the original story. I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to everyone in the literature section who nominated me for this award. 
the literature faculty and staff have always supported me both professionally and personally. And now here's Iqbal Dhaliwal, the Global Executive Director of the Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab, who will introduce our next award. The Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab, affectionately known as JPAL, has experienced enormous growth over the years. As part of that growth, we have expanded from three initiatives that provided a couple million dollars in grants to seven active initiatives awarding upwards of $10 million in research funding annually. To support this growth, the program has needed a lot of great ideas. Fortunately, our business analyst, Brittany Bradley, has been an amazing source of ideas and a leader in implementing many of these innovations since she joined us in 2016. That is why we are honoring her today with the Great Ideas Award for 2020. Brittany has a special ability both to see big systemic issues and to lead the charge to put solutions in place. In particular, she led the effort to bring the Foundation Connect Grants Management Portal to JPAL. She worked with teams in our offices worldwide and with many diverse stakeholders to understand their needs and inform how we set up the new system. This work is helping us take our program to the next level. Brittany also led the effort to remake JPAL's knowledge management systems for research initiatives. This project is making us an even more efficient and effective generator of evidence-based research. In sum, Brittany has an incredible talent for understanding what we need to track, how our overlapping systems collect information, and how to build systems that serve the needs of the entire organization. Brittany also has been a positive force for inclusion in our office, making sure that everyone feels supported. In short, she makes JPAL a much better place to work. So thank you, Brittany, for your tireless drive to find creative solutions and many, many congratulations on your very well-deserved award. It's really exciting to be able to see the data that we've collected being used to better inform the projects that our initiatives are choosing for funding to make sure that our funding is equitable. We're looking a lot at diversity, equity, and inclusion among our affiliates and our invited researchers and the areas that we are concentrating our funding in. Um, and it's wonderful to be a part of that. JPAL focuses on working towards reducing, with the goal, very lofty goal, of eliminating global poverty through the lens of economics, and I think that that work is fascinating and incredibly important. I think that I've kind of always thought that my work in the organization is important in a very behind-the-scenes way, but it supports the larger outward-facing work that gets more publicity and wins things like the Nobel Prizes that the rest of the organization does. To know that other people saw that as well meant the world to me. Now I'd like to hand it to Richard Samuels of the Center for International Studies to present the next award. No job ever seems to be too big or too small for Fatih Pasaga. Uh, as the systems administrator for the Center for International Studies, he was always willing to jump in and to help. And that's why he's the winner of our Unsung Hero Award for 2020. Coming from a non-MIT environment, Fatih dove right in to take command of all our various computing systems. His work included caring for approximately 80 computers for staff and faculty, as well as the presentation laptops and the projection systems we use at CIS events. Fatih streamlined all this technology, monitored the equipment, and kept all of our computers operating safely and efficiently. He also went far beyond his job description, pitching in to help with problems large and small, from puzzling out an issue to just helping someone carry a heavy object. One nominator wrote, if I said he was part IT administrator, part detective, part event planner, part international program specialist, part handyman, and part therapist, I still feel like I'd be selling him short. Fatih always went above and beyond in everything he did at CIS. 
He recently left MIT, and I can tell you we miss him already. Congratulations, Fatih. I definitely did feel, you know, a great sense of, um, of joy being able to, you know, support my colleagues during this time. A lot of them weren't really set up to work remotely, uh, you know, because they were so used to coming in. And, you know, um, this was a pretty big move for them. I mean, I, and I couldn't be more grateful, honestly. You know, it was, I loved everyone I worked with. And, um, you know, they were all smart, intelligent people who, you know, did the best they could. And, I mean, um, and I, you know, it was such a great environment, whether it's to protecting the data and information that we work with to just being a good person and helping somebody. It's a service position, you, and it's almost like retail, you know, you, you go, people need you, that's why you have a position. <laughs> so, um, you know, otherwise, if it wasn't for people, then you wouldn't really be, you know, you have to coordinate with people, um, have a certain level of kindness to and patience to, you know, translate what they're trying to explain to you. I feel like you have to be a friend, a co-worker, and someone who's also confidential because you deal with termination. So there's a certain level of, you know, respect and trust that people have for you. And then being able to help that person and then, you know, you check in with them and follow up. And, um, you know, it's such a great feeling to know that things are still going well and, um, and there's no issues. I mean, it was a task trying to uh, get everyone into uh, on the same page about what we're using, the new technology that MIT is incorporating and in tech, uh, integrating into our um, systems to, you know, such as Zoom, Slack. I mean, all these things were purchased right around the time when um, we've had to you know, kind of go on lockdown. And I, I just thought I was doing a good job. And, you know, to see that written down in front of me and, you know, uh, get a little award from it was, you know, very meaningful made me really appreciate my colleagues more. And now here's Erminia Piccinono, who's the Director of Human Resources for MIT Shas, to introduce the next award. I am delighted to be presenting the Unsung Hero Award for 2020 to our wonderful production coordinator, Miguel Flores. In many ways, the role of a production coordinator in the performing arts defies categorization the sheer breadth of responsibility can be daunting in any context, but the job has gotten even more challenging over the past two years as Music and Theatre Arts established our wonderful new facility at W97. Miguel brilliantly handles everything that comes with this fast-paced and unpredictable job, whether it's patiently addressing upset patrons who have arrived to sold out performances or operating the light board for a coworker stranded at home by a snowstorm, he is always ready to handle any crisis. Before the pandemic shut everything down, our new performing arts building was fast becoming a destination for cutting edge performance and Miguel was the unflappable backbone of our programming efforts. He weathered the many growing pains associated with the pace of change while also serving as a force for radical inclusion. Miguel is always working to ensure that everyone has a voice and is heard. He is also a valuable resource for many of our students. This may be the most unsung and heroic aspect of Miguel's day-to-day -day contribution. Miguel cares and the students know he cares. They trust him, which is a beautiful thing. Thank you, Miguel, for all your many contributions and congratulations. I've found that MIT students are, are always willing to explore different things and different ideas that certain actors or certain musicians, because of their training and their upbringing, wouldn't, wouldn't you know, would be very hesitant to do. Quirky was one thing that describes the MIT student. And that quirkiness is creativity. That quirkiness is beloved. So lean into it and just be okay with being yourself. It's a wonderful space. I would love to see it used more. We do have a costume shop, so if anybody wants to come in and build costumes, you know, we have that facility or we have a set, you know, a design lab where people can come and set design and 
we just purchased a laser cutter for it so that we can do those finer details when we when they do modeling and stuff we have a 3d printer in one in the design studio we have a space where we can do a lot of the lighting situations and that's where we teach a lot of like the lighting and sound design classes we have our own scene shop so that we can create any kind of props or any kind of sets that we need to for this wonderful space that we have the arts is the heart of everything and I applaud MIT for making sure that students have that because, you know, the humanities teach you empathy, the humanities teach you emotions. Next up is David Singer, the Raphael Dorman Helen Starbuck Professor of Political Science and Head of the Department who will present our next award. Administrative assistants are often unsung heroes, working behind the scenes to organize all the moving parts in the department, from planning big events to checking out computers and managing room reservations. In the political science department, this challenging job is cheerfully and skillfully handled by Zena Queen, the winner of our 2020 Unsung Hero Award. It's a joy to have Zena at headquarters. She's the first person everyone encounters at our office, and she always goes the extra mile for staff, faculty, and students. She's funny, smart, and exudes positivity and warmth. She attends to every detail of a complex job while also finding time to serve on institute committees such as the MLK Celebration Committee. The work of the department hums smoothly because of Zena. She performs at the highest level of commitment with independence, good judgment, and an ability to balance multiple requests at once. She is the heart and soul of the place, a larger than life personality who enriches our community and culture. She's also the orchestrator of our major social events, particularly the annual holiday party. Each December, she goes above and beyond the call of duty to create a legendary night of celebration. The department is home to a far-flung collection of scholars, visitors, students, and staff for whom Zena is a thoughtful listener, problem solver, and friend. We are very lucky to have Zena in the political science department, and I'm delighted to congratulate her on this well-deserved award. I grew up here at MIT, meaning my grandmother worked here, my mom worked here, my aunts, my cousins worked here. So I've always been in this atmosphere and I was born and raised in Cambridge. So MIT has always been home for me. My main role is to keep everybody connected and together. I do a lot of the events, the faculty lunches. We do a lot of things where we actually come together and it's more than just work. We try to have that family atmosphere here. You can come to me for anything. If you want to know anything about Cambridge, if you don't want to know anything about church, if you want to know the best restaurants to go to, I call myself everything MIT. I can help you with anything, big or small. You want to know where a bakery is, I can tell you that. So I like being pulled into everything and making everybody feel warm and fuzzy inside. It's the smallest things that make employees feel wonderful. Even if they had just said, you know, Zena, we just want to recognize you. We don't have anything to give you right now, but we want to recognize you, we see you. That's a big deal. That is a big deal and I thank them for that. I'm feeling the love. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'd like to show this to you. One of the students made this for me out of woodwork. They show me so much love. I'm telling the students, everybody. And I also, I have a selfie that they framed for me that we all took together. MIT has taken Kendall Square, which was a dump, and it's thriving. And brought other companies here, you know, Google's here, Facebook, I mean, all other companies, Microsoft. I give MIT that credit. I'm loving the way they're making my city grow. I've also noticed that they've getting more involved in the community, I like to see that. You know, they're trying to um, get more young women involved in STEM, women of color. So I pass that message on through church or wherever I go in Cambridge where I could pass that message on to get more people involved. So the more they know, the more they grow. Congratulations to all of our 2020 Infinite Mile Award winners. I want to thank all of you for your tremendous work in keeping MIT going strong. We're now going to move on to our 2021 award recipients. These colleagues exemplify the spirit of going above and beyond in their roles and work on a regular basis supporting their team's mission in diverse initiatives throughout the school. And starting this year, 
We are dispensing with categories in order to open up the Infinite Mile Awards to more people, recognizing that some great contributions to the Institute simply defy categorization. With that, I will pass the baton to Professor Glenn Ellison, Gregory K. Palm Professor of Economics, to introduce the first of our winners for the 2021 Infinite Mile Awards. Reliable, knowledgeable, and attentive to even the smallest detail. Deborah Jamiel does amazing work as Administrative Assistant for the Economics Department. I'm delighted to have the chance to honor her today. Deb has a natural and intense curiosity that benefits all of us. She's always fine-tuning her skills and sharing her latest discoveries. Whenever a new technology is rolled out at MIT or a new policy takes effect, Deb will investigate it, test it out, and share her findings with her coworkers. She's been the go-to source for information on how to manage the new online course material system Canvas, and she's our expert in how to run a remote seminar. In June, she pitched the idea of holding just staff Zoom meetings so we could all get to know some of our new coworkers and catch up with each other. These weekly meetings proved indispensable in the early days of the pandemic when we were still figuring out how to do our jobs well in highly irregular circumstances. This award recognizes Deb's ongoing hard work and dedication, her professional curiosity, and her generosity in helping others. From all of us at the Institute, thanks and congratulations. I am incredibly honored to receive this award. Um, I feel it just feels like a real, it was a really nice validation, you know, especially in light of how difficult things have been for the past year. Um, it was it was a complete surprise and I'm incredibly grateful and very honored. When one of my people got the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago, all sorts of interesting things came across my desk. It was kind of fun, you know, to see all the communications and like the first week, all I did was like field like phone calls from the media. It was crazy. It was crazy, but it was crazy in a good way, you know. And uh, so I'm always kind of trying to pick up new things. Um, my latest thing that I was working on last year was getting into um, like videos. You know, some courses were recorded and trying to figure out how to edit videos and, you know, download them from one platform and upload them to another, um, you know, and then figure out how to get like, um, uh, permissions so that the videos could be hosted up on MIT's OpenCourseWare site. Um, so I was working on getting all those from uh, students. As a matter of fact, I dug back into that today and I got my last five responses. So now I have a complete set of responses for um, for the videos, which I'm pretty happy about. It's, it's the little things that, you know, brighten up my day. Our next award goes to another star in the economics department, so I'm delighted to be able to present another Infinite Mile Award. This one, the Executive Director of our School Effectiveness and Inequality Initiative. SEII is a research lab based in our department. The Executive Director of this initiative, Erin Hying, shoulders enormous responsibilities, and she does it all with care and enthusiasm. She's always working to help the people she leads to achieve their goals, and I am so glad that we are able to honor her today. Aaron's work requires meticulous attention to a dizzying variety of financial and contractual obligations, including grant management, data privacy and security arrangements, confidentiality protocols, and ongoing data sharing arrangements. She oversees a complex and rapidly growing enterprise that involves three faculty principal investigators, millions of dollars in grant money, more than a dozen research associates, and a network of partner organizations. And she does it all with a steady hand. Under her wise and capable stewardship, our research output and funding efforts have grown in scope and ambition, as has our team. As one nominator put it, everyone relies on Erin for her astute intellect, her gimlet eye for seeing the big picture and the tiny crucial details simultaneously, and her extraordinary ability to organize, motivate, and unobtrusively lead a diverse team. Erin's professional accomplishments alone would be enough to qualify her for this award. But what makes her truly special is the way she has created a genuinely supportive culture. This is something felt by everyone and is the most cited of her accomplishments. Erin always has time for employees and constantly checks in to see how everyone is doing. We are extremely fortunate to have Erin on our team. 
Congratulations, Aaron, on this well-deserved award. We work with a variety of school districts and state agencies and different partners to study education and learn what works. We have about 10 full-time staff members who work for us and then a ton of PhD students and faculty affiliates who help us um, make great research happen. And so uh, I manage the different administrative arms of, of our work, as well as fundraising and um, our research operations. I have the most amazing and brilliant and kind uh, colleagues who really make everybody feel like a valued member of the team and who are all really devoted to doing work that has a social impact. And so we focus on really interesting questions and are very rigorous and evidence-based. And so that is something that I find deeply gratifying and exciting, not only to be able to work on really interesting content and topics, but also to do that with such a really great, talented team that, um, you know, is, is also fun to work with. We have, we have fun while we, we do the work that we do. One of the approaches we take is to really be rigorous about measuring impact and studying what kinds of policies and practices are really effective for students. We use a lot of big data sets and existing administrative data to study those questions. And, you know, our, our faculty directors are really experts in understanding how to harness those big data sets to understand causal impact. Our next presenter, Emma Tang, is the T.T. and Wei Fong Chow Professor of Asian Civilizations, as well as the longtime head of the Global Languages section. Here she is to introduce the next award. It is always challenging for someone to join an organization during a transition, yet Liam Brenner has managed to perform with excellence through two transitions in our unit, as well as through a global pandemic. As the Administrative Officer for Global Languages, he has truly gone the extra mile with dedication and good humor. It is a pleasure to be able to honor Liam today. Ever since joining our program in August 2018, Liam has been absolutely essential to our work. He brings a highly rational approach to the management of the unit, and he has revitalized our financial and administrative processes. To provide just one key example, he tackled the challenge of organization and record keeping by moving headquarters work onto the web-based platform, SharePoint. He spearheaded this team effort that proved invaluable when we all unexpectedly shifted to remote work during the pandemic. Liam gives his all to faculty, lecturers, students, and staff, while also providing careful stewardship of the unit's resources. As one nominator wrote, his dedication to his job and his attention to detail are remarkable, and so are his readiness to help and his ability to answer many different questions. Above all, Liam's steady and quiet leadership amplifies the strengths of those around him. Thank you, Liam, for all that you do, and congratulations. We have Chinese, English, French, German, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish at the moment. I don't think a lot of students come here with the idea or intention of making the humanities or a language their primary area of study or focus. But that said, I think Shas broadly, but you know, global languages specifically has an important role to supplement the, the other work that students can do at MIT. Um, I mean, needless to say, students are such high achievers that we can expect they'll be making differences all over the world. And to that extent, learning about the cultures that they'll interact with learning basically how to interact with the cultures different from their own is hugely important. We live in a world that is shaped by how we can express the world and the words that we have and learning a new language. It's kind of amazing how that gives you the possibility to express it in a completely different way and, and in fact to think about it or to see it in a different way as well. It's very flattering to think that you're doing work that is, you know, so valued or recognized by others. Um, but uh, for me personally, you know, 
on it's kind of on two levels. I mean, nothing that I do is is me alone. Um, you know, I work in a, a headquarters with with staff who do excellent work, all supporting each other to get the job done at the end of the day. And this year, particularly, I feel like everybody has found some way to rise to this challenge. Um, everybody's gone above and beyond, not only to keep it on the rails, but you know, to find a way to make it work uh, better in this new environment in a lot of ways. Now I would like to bring back Richard Samuels to present the next Infinite Mile Award. Over the past decade or so, Rosabelli Coelho Cesar has nearly single-handedly built MIT Brazil into the remarkable international program it is today. As the MISTI program that links MIT to Latin America's most important economy, it's a critical point of connectivity and outreach for the Institute. For her tireless contributions to this program, and to the students it serves, it's my pleasure to present Rosa with this Infinite Mile Award. Rosa is unstoppable. She's kind, creative, and passionate about her work. Not only does she fundraise for internships, she also makes connections with local companies, with universities and nonprofits to ensure placements. And while overseeing the logistics of the entire program, she also cares for students like a parent, shepherding them through every challenge. An inspiration to all of us for her dedication, Rosa thoroughly prepares students for their in-country experiences, work that results in extremely high student satisfaction. This past year, with all travel shut down, Rosa still found a way for MISTI to thrive. She led and she implemented a MISTI Brazil remote internship program for about 30 students, and it was a remarkable experience for all involved. Rosa's always coming up with innovative ideas for events and programming, going above and beyond to make MIT a home away from home. She's involved with the Brazilian Students Association and the Brazilian Conference in Boston, and she's personally helped many students to find housing and adapt to life at MIT. All workplaces need more people like Rosa. I hope you'll join me in congratulating her on this very well-deserved honor. We all are in this trying to engage the MIT students with the bigger world out there. And I think that having the opportunity to see them before they have the experience and afterwards, that really just keeps me more and more excited about finding the kinds of experiences that really will give the students an opportunity to explore career paths that otherwise they wouldn't. Having the opportunity to be um, nominated by my colleagues is just something that I don't think that there is a better reward than this. It just says, yes, we're working together. We may be sometimes anxious. I put a lot of pressure on myself as I imagine each one of us really do because we want to do a good job. But, you know, in the end, it's just, I think, what gives me most pleasure and obviously then makes me be part of this community is to not close myself into the things that I need to do from an individual program, but continue trying to find ways to connect more dots inside the Institute, discover more programs that can become sister-brother programs, be it MIT Brazil or MISTI, keep our eyes open and our hearts open too. Uh, it really is about, you know, the hands that make, the, the brain that thinks, but mostly the heart. And I am very fortunate, thank you. Now I'd like to give the floor to Amy Finkelstein, the John and Jenny McDonald Professor of Economics and the Co-Scientific Director of JPAL North America, who will present the next award. A senior grants and financial officer for JPAL North America, Sarah Orzali is responsible for much of the financial underpinnings of our work. She develops and submits grant proposals, handles financial reporting, and creates long-term plans. But much more than this, Sarah transforms disorder into order. She brings clarity to confusion 
and she leaves an imprint of calm competence on every project she touches. She does it all with efficiency and good cheer, and I'm thrilled to be honoring her with this Infinite Mile Award. Sarah is an excellent manager and colleague who brings positivity and enthusiasm to her work and inspires everyone around her. Her colleagues agree that Sarah is, as one nominator put it, spectacular, superb, an entire finance and grants department wrapped into one fun and interesting person. Among her many recent accomplishments, Sarah led j North America's efforts to secure funding and launch the MIT Roy Ball Center for Translational Research to Improve Healthcare for the Aging. On another occasion, with only four days notice, Sarah efficiently and successfully coordinated the drafting and submission of a complex two-year, $500,000 National Institutes of Health Award proposal for COVID-related randomized evaluations. This involved collaborating closely with two PIs at different universities and coordinating with external partners. It was a superhuman effort. What's more, Sarah has an extraordinary generosity of spirit. Just to give one quick example, she has devoted considerable time and energy to advising and coaching various MIT economics PhD students, a task that is not even a part of her formal job description. She does it simply because they need the help. We at j and the whole MIT community are fortunate to have her here. Congratulations, Sarah. It's been an amazing four years. I have had the opportunity to grow a lot. The organization has grown a lot. We've been able to bring in federal grants, which was, um, you know, had been a goal for a while. And, and last year we were finally successful. Um, we brought in an, an NIH center grant, which has been a, a new and complicated endeavor. Um, but it's been a great opportunity to, to learn and to work with different types of people um, at NIH, throughout MIT, um, to learn from their expertise. There's always something new to learn. Um, different types of funders. We're looking at working with state governments in the future, which we haven't done yet. I really like feeling like I'm part of a larger community that's trying to do good in the world. I feel very fortunate to have ended up in this group of colleagues who are all very smart and committed and fun to work with. It's really nice to feel valued by my colleagues. Thank you for the opportunity to work with such a great group of people. It's really been such a pleasure and an honor over the last several years. Um, and I'm looking forward to many more. I will now turn things back over to David Singer to present our next honoree. As the graduate program administrator for the political science department, Susan Tuarag is often the first person MIT students meet when they apply and the last person they encounter when they drop off their completed dissertations. And during all the time that they're here, she is available to explain policies and procedures, answer questions about course requirements, administer financial aid packages, organize social events, and so much more. She is a cheerleader, mediator, and sage advisor to our students. And she does it all with a level of professionalism and warmth that is exceptional. It brings me great pleasure to present her with this Infinite Mile Award. Having been at MIT since 1997, Susan commands a mastery of MIT as an institution that serves everyone in the department. She's always a pleasure to work with, embracing her responsibilities with constant and serious resolve. The past year proved to be one of the most challenging times imaginable, and Susan really proved her mettle. She was on the receiving end of one hardball after another as we abruptly switched to online learning, relocated students to their home countries, and then suddenly had them back in the US. Through it all, she took the initiative to keep our students informed and was always available to provide guidance. Many have said how grateful they are for her support. And as if that weren't enough, Susan has also volunteered to serve on the department's new DEI working group and she helped grad students set up a new mentorship program for underrepresented minority applicants. One nominator wrote, 
For Susan, the metaphor of going an extra mile doesn't cut it. Maybe 100 miles comes closer. Certainly she goes above and beyond. So I hope you'll join me in congratulating her for this well-deserved award. I'm constantly dealing with graduate students, and I'm also constantly dealing with faculty and other offices at MIT, the Office of Graduate Education, the Registrar's Office, anything that involves students, their requirements, the grading, you know, figuring out where they're going to be, what they're going to do, their funding, just every single aspect of the graduate student's uh, life at MIT I'm involved in. And that also means I deal with a lot of um, student problems um, from funding to difficulty academically to sometimes personal problems. And um, it's, it's a challenge. It's a continuing challenge. I think um, I'm good at what I do. I think that the fact that I have children of my own who are all adults at this point has helped me um, understand what some of the graduate students are going through. It's been a real pleasure to work with them and also to develop relationships with the faculty and um, my colleagues. I have wonderful, wonderful colleagues. And now I'm gonna turn the floor back over to Dean Nobles. Thank you, David. And thanks to all of our presenters. I find it really energizing to learn about all the incredible work being done at every level of the school. It's truly inspiring. Before we conclude, I would like to thank the selection committee for both this year and for 2020, for all of the time and effort they put into choosing our winners. And I would like to thank the many letter writers who took the time to submit nominations for the program. Without you, the rewards and recognition program would not be successful. Finally, I would like to offer my own congratulations again to our 2020 and 2021 Infinite Mile Award winners. Let's give them one final round of applause. Mm -hmm.